R. Kelly uh, is going to be looking for a little more protection while he's in jail in Chicago because we've heard from officials at the prison he was attacked by another inmate. Tonight, an inmate claims he snuck into R. Kelly's jail cell to attack the singer. This is Jeremiah Farmer, who claims he was forced to beat the Grammy winner. R. Kelly's been in jail for a long time, and I'll be honest, the fact that something like this, or someone didn't attempt to do this before, it's I, surprising. I yeah. Imagine being trapped in a nightmare within a nightmare. Picture a notorious gangster turning a celebrity's life behind bars into a nightmare. That's exactly what happened to R. Kelly when Jeremiah Shane Farmer attacked him in prison. You see, Farmer was no ordinary inmate. He was part of a dangerous gang called the Latin Kings, known for their ruthless ways. Farmer, in jail for racketeering conspiracy, lays it all out in this appeal to the Seventh Circuit. It's like a real-life drama unfolding in prison. Farmer's assault on the R&B singer made headlines. But was this really a hit ordered by the Latin Kings? Or was this just a lone wolf attack by a man motivated by things we can't even begin to imagine? If it was the Latin Kings, why did they target R. Kelly? These are the big questions. From the streets to the cells, it would appear the drama unfolds, revealing the dangerous games reportedly played by those seeking control. This video dives deep into the gritty underworld of prison gangs and their vendettas. What led to the assault? What beef did they have with R. Kelly? And what does this say about the harsh realities of life inside prison walls? Prepare for a wild ride as we uncover the truth behind R. Kelly's harrowing ordeal at the hands of a gangster determined to make his life a living hell. Farmer, in jail for racketeering conspiracy, lays it all out in this appeal to the Seventh Circuit. Now let me give you some idea on who this attacker was. Jeremiah Farmer is a 39-year-old member of the notorious Latin Kings gang, who was convicted not only for de-racketeering, but also for the brutal eliminations of two businessmen back in 1999. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. It all began with Farmer's involvement in a racketeering conspiracy dating back to 1999, as revealed by federal prosecutors. This conspiracy wasn't just about making money, it involved a string of heinous acts ranging from attempted elimination to aggravated assault, ST, and D-distribution. These weren't just run-of-the-mill crimes. They were heinous acts that included the brutal eliminations of Marion Lowry and Harvey Seegers, owners of Calumet Auto Rebuilders, two businessmen who fell victim to Farmer's merciless agenda. The details are chilling. They were beaten to death with a hammer at their own place of business in Hamong. Farmer's actions really terrorized communities, leaving a trail of devastation in its wakey. As the FBI's special agent in charge, Paul Keenan aptly put it, Farmer terrorized the community with his violent actions. But his sentencing wasn't just about locking up a dangerous criminal, it was about sending a message that such behavior would not be tolerated. Fast forward to July 2019, and Farmer found himself facing the consequences of his crimes. Alongside 42 other gang members convicted of racketeering conspiracy and drug charges, he was sentenced to life in prison. But even behind bars, his story took a bizarre turn. So, a jail cell in downtown Chicago, R. Kelly, awaiting trial on his own charges of S.A., found himself the target of Farmer's Fury. In a handwritten filing to the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals, Farmer made a startling admission. He attacked none other than the R&B singer R. Kelly while they were both incarcerated. According to Farmer, he was compelled to carry out this assault as a desperate plea for attention, to shed light on what he claimed was government corruption in his own case, painting himself as a whistleblower fighting against injustice. Farmer, in jail for racketeering conspiracy, lays it all out in this appeal to the Seventh Circuit. This shocking revelation thrust Farmer into the spotlight once again, but it also raised questions about the circumstances surrounding the attack on Kelly. Farmer's claims painted a picture of frustration and desperation. He supposedly resorted to violence as a last resort, hoping to draw attention to his own legal plight. Locked down amidst the chaos of the COVID-19 pandemic, denied access to legal resources, and feeling abandoned by his defense team, Farmer saw Kelly as a means to an end. 
alleging that he had been failed by the very system meant to deliver justice. The details of the attack are chilling. Kelly, asleep in his cell at the Metropolitan Correctional Center in downtown Chicago, was caught off guard when Farmer launched his assault. According to reports, Farmer punched Kelly repeatedly before being stopped by a prison employee who used pepper spray to intervene. Farmer also allegedly had an ink pen with him that he was going to use to stab Mr. Kelly. The incident left Kelly battered and bruised. While Farmer was swiftly transferred to another prison, his moment in the spotlight dimming as quickly as it had flared. But the fallout didn't end there. Kelly's legal team sought answers, hoping to question Farmer about the attack. However, their efforts were thwarted by a federal judge who denied their request, ruling that the assault wasn't reason enough to grant Kelly bail. For Kelly, already facing multiple charges of S.A. and assault, this was just another setback in a series of legal battles. Kelly's trials, scheduled across different jurisdictions, had faced repeated delays, largely due to the then ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. From New York to Chicago and Minnesota, he faces a slew of charges ranging from S exploitation of young ones to racketeering and forced labor. Each trial brought its own set of allegations, painting a damning portrait of a man once celebrated for his musical talent. Meanwhile, in Chicago, Videotapes allegedly depicting Kelly engaging in S acts with girls below consenting age formed the bases of federal charges against him. And in Minnesota, accusations of P with a young one added yet another layer to the scandal. But we do begin tonight with singer R. Kelly, sentenced to 30 years behind bars after his conviction on racketeering and <laughs> charges. Prosecutors accused him of leading a criminal enterprise of managers, bodyguards, and other employees. As the legal proceedings dragged on, the fulky of both Kelly and Farmer hung in the balance. Once a big shot in music, R. Kelly faced a tough time in court. For a long time, the world waited to see what would happen to him. Would he end up behind bars forever, or would his legal tricks save him? It was like a suspenseful movie, with everyone holding their breath to see how it would end. Kelly, who used to rock the stage, was now at the court's mercy, with little room to prove his innocence. The stakes were high and the drama was real. Folks all over were glued to their seats, waiting to see how it would turn out. Well, we know how that turned out for him, eventually. In 2021, he got slapped with a 30-year prison sentence in New York for using his fame to harm women and kids. But let's take a beat to actually look at the gang that the attacker belongs to. As earlier mentioned, Jeremiah Farmer is a member of the notorious Latin Kings gang. Now, for some folks that might be wondering who the Latin Kings gangs are, the first thing to know is that this is a group you don't want to be caught messing with. Here's how they started. In the bustling streets of Humboldt Park, Chicago, back in 1954, a group called the Imperials rose up. Led by Ramon Santos, they were initially a group that fought for Puerto Ricans in Chicago. Their mission was to fight against the discrimination that plagued their community. But as such things usually go, it eventually got out of hand. Life in the city wasn't easy. Violence from other gangs, like the Greek and Italians, was a constant threat. So to stand stronger, the Imperials joined forces with other Puerto Rican and Mexican gangs, birthing what we now know today as the Latin Kings. At first, the Latin kings were like a shield, protecting their people from harm. They fought against other groups going after Puerto Ricans and other Latinos. But as time passed, something changed. Instead of fighting discrimination, they began to embrace a darker path. They turned to crime, spreading their influence far beyond the streets of Humboldt Park. Today, the Latin kings have become a force to be reckoned with. With two main factions, the King Motherland, Chicago, and Bloodline, they've spread their reach across the United States. From New York City to California, their presence is felt in over 158 cities across 31 states. And in their hometown of Chicago, their numbers are staggering, with estimates ranging from 20,000 to 35,000 members. But it doesn't stop there. The Latin Kings have gone global, establishing chapters in Latin American and European countries. They're not just a local gang anymore. They're an international organization with a reputation for ruthlessness. 
In the hierarchy of Hispanic street gangs, the Latin kings hold a prominent place, only rivaled by the likes of the Sureños, Norteños, MS-13, and the 18th Street Gang. They are currently one of the largest and most influential groups in the United States. As I said earlier, in Chicago alone, they boast a membership of over 25,000 strong. But behind the numbers and the headlines, there's a story of lost potential. The Latin Kings started with noble intentions, a group fighting for equality and justice. But somewhere along the way, they lost their path. Instead of lifting up their community, they brought it down with violence and crime. Anyways, that happens a lot in life. So, in case you are wondering how to spot a Latin king, it is actually easy if you know what to look for. Keep an eye out for the sacred crown, either in five points or three, boldly displayed as a symbol of honor and loyalty. You might also catch glimpses of LK, ALK, ALKN, or ALKQN scribbled around, representing the unity and pride of the gang. And don't forget the majestic lion or the revered king master, depicted in drawings as a mark of strength and authority. But there's more to the Latin kings than just symbols and colors. They're part of the People Nation Alliance, standing in opposition to the rival Folk Nation Gang Alliance. It's a world where alliances matter and loyalty runs deep. Now let's talk about discipline. In the Latin kings, rules aren't just suggestions. They're strictly enforced. If a member steps out of line, there's a process in place. It starts with a procedures for violation form, detailing the alleged offense and gathering statements from all involved. Then comes the crown hearing, where guilt is determined and consequences are meted out. For those found guilty, punishment varies depending on the severity of the offense. It could mean probation, fines, or even suspension from wearing the colors. And for the most serious transgressions, corporal punishment isn't off the table. Beat on sight, three-minute physical, five-minute physical. These are more than just phrases. They're punishments meted out by fellow members, reinforcing the importance of following the rules. But why such strict discipline? For the Latin kings, it's about maintaining order and respect within the ranks. According to them, it's about upholding the values of brotherhood and solidarity. In a world where loyalty is everything, rules aren't just rules. They're the foundation upon which the gang stands. Also, the Latin kings operate with rules set in stone and ideals guiding their actions. Picture a thick book, like a guide, telling them how to live and what to believe. This book is their constitution, and it's serious business for them. They also follow something called the King Manifesto, which is like their Bible, guiding them through different stages of life. The first stage is called the primitive stage. It's like being a teenager, acting on impulses without really thinking. Imagine spending all your time hanging out with your friends, getting into fights, and trying to look tough. That's what it's like at this stage. Then there's the conservative stage. It's when you start feeling tired of all the fighting and trouble. You might even want to settle down, get married, and leave all the gang stuff behind. But it's not really about growing up. It's more like giving in to how society expects you to behave. You're still stuck in the same old system that keeps people like you down. But then there's the new king stage. According to them, this is when everything changes. Supposedly, it's like waking up from a long sleep and realizing that things need to be different. Instead of fighting each other, it's reportedly about fighting for something bigger, like freedom and justice. If their claim is to be believed, it's about realizing that we're all in this together, no matter our race or background. Supposedly, life becomes about more than just stuff. It's about people and making things better for everyone. When someone becomes a new king, they allegedly become part of something greater than themselves. The idea is that they pledge themselves to the Latin king's nation and its ideals. Of course, that means that going against the Latin king's nation is something they just can't do. So, what does this all mean? It means that the Latin kings are just a gang and a community with their own rules and beliefs. The idea is that while they might have started in the streets, they're aiming for something bigger like a revolution of the mind and a better future for everyone. 
You'd have to take that with a pinch of salt, though, given the blood trail that has followed the gang since inception. So what does the future hold for the Latin kings? Will they continue down the same dark road, leaving a trail of destruction in their wake? Or is there hope for change, a chance to reclaim their original purpose and make a positive impact once again? Only time will tell. But one thing's for sure. The story of the Latin kings is far from over. Whether they're remembered as champions of the people or notorious criminals, their legacy will endure, a reminder of the power and the peril of lost ideals.